This podcast is sponsored by the UK's number one matched betting site. OddsMonkey shows you exactly how to turn free bets into real money. Win even if your bet loses. Give it a try at oddsmonkey.com for just £1 when you sign up to premium using the offer code BERGCAMP. Hello and welcome to the Guna Ramble podcast. I'm your host Giles and joining me today are three very fine wise men. We've got Dave Seeger. How are you doing mate? I'm very well thank you as you would expect. I thought he was that. I thought he was leaving me hanging on, a, on purpose there. I was thinking he's, 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 he's doing me like a kid really. You know what I mean? You are right, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm very well mate. I'm very well. Good man. Uh, we've got Waz. How are you doing mate? You alright? Yes mate. I'm very very good. Good. Thanks for having us on. No worries, and we've also got Akil. How you doing, sir? Yeah, very well. I've just come crashing down to earth after a, a very, very big weekend. But um, yeah. How so, long was your binge this weekend? Ah, uh, started Saturday morning. It finished probably early hours of today, so around sort of four in the morning today. Wow! Talk about forty-eight hour people. Mm. Dave, how was yours? How was your weekend and all in all? Pretty good, my friend. Pretty good, as you'd expect. Um, yeah, can't complain. Went in with uh, limited expectations and was pleasantly surprised, um, as we all were, I'm sure. Fantastic yeah. day. Indeed. Was you started off pretty well because we were all down in the same pub, me, you and Dave, and uh, you your people really got going quite early, didn't we? I mean, with lots <laughs> of Jagers, lots of... Uh, Sing song, a lot of people falling down off chairs and whatnot. And, <laughs> <laughs> Mate, and then he got up and sang it again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> uh, it was a cracking day. I mean, like Dave said, to be honest, it was all similar to the semi final. We just knew we was going to enjoy ourselves and, and case of our whatever will be as the song goes. And um, yeah, it started early and it, and it escalated pretty quick. And to be honest with you, probably the last three hours before the game was a bit of a blur in that pub. So yeah. I do apologise if. Um, Upset any of you? <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of hugging and kissing, and I love you, man, and all that. Sort of stuff, yeah. And we've got photographic evidence as well. Um, yeah. And this was and this was before we exactly. Won. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, cool. So let's. Go. I think I think I think we I think we we should take this opportunity just to give Woz thirty seconds to get it out of his system. You know, gone. Just give us a Ramsey song or give us something about Ram. Just gone, mate. Just, just, just It'll take come. the mic. It'll, It'll come. come. It's not all about Ramsey, <laughs> is it? Let's, let, we'll get to that, mate. I'm, I'm, I'll, 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 I'm only I'll kidding. I'll subtly drop his name in every now and then during the pod, maybe, okay? <laughs> we, we actually, we brace had, yourself. I just thought it was lovely that you had, came out of hibernation on such an important day. Hey, here we go. Here we, go. <laughs> we, actually, we actually had a few comments. I was we, getting We had two or three people. Game, wasn't I? Bloody hell. Everyone I met in the toilet was like, hey, Ramsey, still don't like Ramsey, Dave. We, we, we had two or three people actually go to the last pod just to comment to write, is what's going to talk about Ramsey <laughs> exactly. in the next pod. So Everyone's people expecting people are waiting. Speech for us. Everyone's waiting. So listen, um, passion, desire, determination. I've heard lots of it already on the pod about you know discussing our days and whatnot. And that is exactly the three factors that we saw on display on Saturday um you know, we matched them up three for three, and we we started off on the front foot. We felt like we really we really took the initiative. Akil, did you think going into the game that you know um, that we should really sort of like play our game, or were you sort of worried and hoping we would be a bit more pragmatic and start off in the same way that we started off against uh, Man City, where we kept it tight, um, we yeah. prioritised counter attacking. I mean, how, how, what was your feeling? Um, yeah, I, 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 when I thought about this pre-game, and we, we sort of obviously, I, I saw you, Charles, outside your yeah. pub very quickly. But as we, as we were, we were in another pub where we were just kind of talking about it, and we thought, well, there's two ways, isn't there? Really, we, we, we all remember that three-nil um, first half at, at the Emirates against Chelsea when we just absolutely went for them, and we absolutely did them. But that was very early on in the season. That was that was when they weren't playing three at the back. So you thought, well, you know, when we have kind of won these, well, you think about the two big games against City in the in the cup in the League a couple of years ago. 
that it's been that sort of counter-attack approach. So you, you kind of thought you want probably want a balance um, of the two. But I think what maybe had an impact was was obviously we were light at the back, um, which I think it, in a funny way, it, there was no real decisions to make there. So we were all thinking about, you know, is he going to go better? Like this is when we thought maybe a few more would be fit. Is he going to go Bellerin or Oxlade chamberlain Or well, in the end, he didn't actually have a choice. He had to go with Mertesacker, Monreal and holding and he had to go with, with, with Bellerin well, only, and, and only, Chamberlain. Only he didn't go back to the old formation. I mean, he had of course, yeah, of course. Of course, but I just, I think, I think there was a, I mean, obviously when we played the semi, we had only just started that formation. So I think going, going against a team like City, having only really played that formation, was it the second or third game? I thought that that could be a bit of a risk, because I think we, we feel a lot more confident in it. Um, and obviously, we, you know, all the players talked about it after, that they're all kind of... Uh, they wanted to start well and they, they feel they haven't started well. And I think Oxo Chamberlain might have been the one, or Welbeck might have been the one to say it at the end that actually it's taken us a goal for us to go a goal down before we start playing and we were determined for that not to happen today so you know they had a game plan they stuck to it and, and, and it worked I mean it was great to see great <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all Someone at the front door, what? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I mean, mate, it's that's... <laughs> that, 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 that was me, actually. Oh, another, <laughs> another delivery of your uh, JD. Avon, Avon, Avon. So I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, it, it's it's the FA Cup medal that I always... <laughs> <laughs> um, Dave, coming to you, I mean, as uh, Aki already uh, highlighted, um, we had really no choice in... In terms of the personnel we were going to play at the back, um, you, as you said before the game, were uh, wondering whether he'd go to a back four or stick with the back three. And you see, you said to me actually that um, you know uh, Ox can play left wing back. He's very underrated there. His left foot is very underrated there. But were you worried even still? Um, yeah, of course I was worried. I mean, I said, when, when I say he is two footed, he's very happy to use both feet. But using both feet in attacking positions is a lot different to having to defend on both feet, isn't it? So, yeah, I mean, I was no problem with him going forward on the left, but, you know, you still have a slight concern about, you know, how he's going to defend um, against good players, on, or, you know, in an uncomfortable and, un, you know, unused, unused position for him. But I thought he did fantastically well. I did, I did have, I did have a, a thought that Wenger might be too cautious and just, you know, play his two centre blacks and leave Monreal on the left. I did think it was, I think Wenger in the past might have done that, um, but he didn't. So I'm glad he didn't. I didn't want him to, but I thought he might. And I was pleasantly surprised uh, when he went for it. But, you know, we all had reservations about what Per was going to be able to do for 90 minutes. And uh, we, needn't have, we needn't have been too worried as it turned out. Very yeah, happy. Uh, was um, the way the, the initiative we took, I mean, were you surprised that we started off on the front foot considering... You know, we'd still had, like, you know, the memories of, of the three, one or three nil shellacking at, at Chelsea were sort of fresh in our memories. And, you know, Chelsea obviously, you know, finishing the season the way they did. You, you know, uh, were you, were, were you surprised that we, you know, we hit them? Because we obviously, we, we really pressed up when they had the ball. We really pressed up. You know, we had four people pressing up on them. We, even, uh, even though, it, you know, it left a possibility of it being exposed when Louise got the ball. Um, did you expect us to sort of like sit back in a low block or were you, you know, or, or I was, I was ex- so pleasantly surprised with the way we started the game, and we've all alluded to it. Arsenal haven't have, haven't started games like that for a long, long time, and we, we often haven't been on the front foot. We haven't been quick enough into our stride. But I tell you something: we have since going to this three at the back, we have gained momentum, and that ball has been rolling, picking up more and more snow on the way down the hill, and it just smashed straight into Chelsea right from the off, and. I was so shocked. I was so shocked. We were front footed. We were aggressive. All our players were matching them man for man. We were first to the challenges. We were second to the challenges. And we were direct and we were so good on the ball. And, and often we talk about, it. you can see very early in games that you can tell whether Arsenal are going to be on it or not with, with regards to their, their ball playing ability. And my God, straight away, I mean, in the, even when you look before the build up to the corner, before the goal, I mean, we yeah. were spraying the ball around with ease, like, Mesut, Ramsey was going on beyond making a run in space. Ozil was dropping in. He takes the ball off Xhaka. Alexis in a little gap and he runs direct and straight away we're on it. We're in a corner and you think, yes, come on Arsenal. It's early in the game and it was just a brilliant start and, and we couldn't have expected any more. And I think it almost, 
I wouldn't say shocked Chelsea because Conte and Chelsea are the champions of England and then they're far too intelligent to, to not expect Arsenal to be very good. But to be as good as we was and match a man for man, they knew they were in a battle then because it become far less tactical and for me far more individualistic in a way that it was man on man rather than we know that we can beat your two centre-backs. We know you can expose your full-backs higher. They had to sort of think, well, hang on a minute. They want it. They're here. They're matching us. They're going man for man. And, and it's going to be a battle. And, and yeah, the, the drive from Alexis that won the corner. And, and there we go, mate. That's what kicked it all off, wasn't it? It was very high risk if you look at it. I mean, even if we, even though we did go man for man in a system that we're not familiar with, I mean, they are the 3-4-3 three, three pass masters, you know. Um, and they like, if you look at people like Pedro, um, Hazard, uh, um, they play? Costa. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they are, they would, they would, you would have thought they would have loved the, the, the one-on-one duel. That's the kind of situation they would, the matchup they would, they would have wanted. But nonetheless, as, as Dave said, I mean, they were, I mean, Costa was in, you know, he, he, he um, I think it was holding that got in Costa's head pretty early. For the rest of the first half, he was in Koscielny's, um, Mertesacker's pocket, I thought Mertesacker was absolutely immense, um, on, on Saturday. Um, again, Hazard, don't know where he was. Pedro, apart from the very early moments, maybe late moments in the first half, where he had a couple of shots on goal, there was nothing from him. And, and the midfield was, 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 was really, um, non-existent. They really didn't gel. They didn't do anything. I think, um, you know, I don't know what happened in the previous game, but their flat two really didn't seem to work, did it? Um, they, uh, guys, I mean, you know, uh, Matic and, and, and Kante really stayed together in a the line. They were close together in the line, whereas ours was split. And it meant that whenever they try to press us, we always had the out ball. Um, and the first goal um, came from, uh, I think it was a corner maybe, and then a little bit of build up. I mean, can you take us through the first goal at? That, that, yeah, that, 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 that first goal was, it, you know what, it, it just shows that it, you know, we, we've, we've kind of, we obviously lost Koscielny, um, we lost Mustafi and we lost Gabriel there. And Monreal played a left wing back in the semi and played very well. But here, you just saw the benefit of having sort of a ball playing left footed player on the left. Because as, yeah, it came from that corner, Courtois got it. Courtois then I think gave it out to Kante, um, who I think it might, I think it was Kante, who played quite a bad ball, and that kind of got us back in, and I think it was Ramsey kind of uh, chasing back who got a foot in, and then it was Monreal who just got it on that sort of, you know, left of the centre, and then just ran with it, and that was kind of um, uh, the benefit of having that kind of fullback playing there, who's comfortable there, and then obviously he gave it back to Ramsey, and then we know the rest is kind of history. Well, maybe if you're Conte and Chelsea, you, you probably want to talk a little bit more about the offside of the handball or whatever but it was that bit that was really impressive that and you just felt that you know what even if we didn't score that I saw enough in that moment in that bit that Kante just looked lost I saw enough with Ramsey getting back enough with Monreal and even Mertesacker there was just in in a position where he was kind of he he was he was side on and he, he knew that okay if Kante does go he, he's still in a position he's got space behind him uh, but he was deep enough to cover and, you know and it was just I don't know it looked set up it looked really well set up and that's probably you know we, we often complain about sort of tactical and now and 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 being not I wouldn't use the word coached but just being kind of have a strategy and it looked like we had one and it was so good to see and then obviously the goal um, you know I'll, I'll let one of the others talk about the goal um but I mean it, it, in the stands it was actually one of those kind of um one of the surreal moments when you know Sanchez pull it in um I mean I, I saw the flag really early and I, I it's the first thing I do I always look at the lino so I I, I generally don't get caught in celebrating goals like that because I've seen the flag up. But it was one of my mates, uh, CJ uh, Giles, mm. who kind of was next to me and said, you know what, if he's going to go and talk to that lino, he's going to give it because he had obviously seen that it was Ramsey offside. And, and that sort of uncertainty for a few seconds, but it was that excitement because we thought, you know what, he might give this. Um, and then when he did, obviously... It was just, you know, Andromonium. I don't think we could believe it. That we, yeah, we, we were one up. We'd scored early, something we do, haven't done much this season in a big game. Um, certainly not uh, away from the Emirates anyway. And, and you just thought, wow, you know, this is this this could be a great day, and it was. Dave, um, actually talked about the build-up to the goal and, and what led to it. I mean, when it ricocheted off of, of Alexis, I mean, what 
explain. Did you think it was offside? Because uh, with me, it's I, hard to tell I, when you're the opposite. And yeah. Ground, isn't it? And you just, it's, it's such a long way away, you know, particularly at Wembley. And I, I had no idea. I was turning around talking to him, saying, you know, what's going on? What's going on? I, I didn't have any idea. You sort of celebrated, stop celebrating. And then 10, 20, 30 seconds later, suddenly you're going mad again. And it's only when you look at it on the big screen afterwards, you, you see it. And I, I thought straight away, yeah, it's the, it's the right decision. You know, Ramsey wasn't interfering with play, but of course I didn't really see the handball from the angle they were showing on the screen. Mm. You know, having watched the highlights later on, I think Chelsea have got every right to feel agreed, not that I care. But mm. yeah, I mean, I, you know, the, the, but again, it's a typical, it's, it's typical Sanchez, isn't it? Just, yeah. just bloody bulldoze your way through. Even if finesse isn't going to work, then something else will work. It just, just really gives you, never gives up, always looking for an opportunity. And, uh, the fair play to Ramsey for thinking so quickly to stop. Yeah. No, I think the, he had gone, to be fair, yeah. but, and he was interfering. But Just just to cut in there, I mean, Stefan Honcho's handball on the line in 2001, I've never forgotten that. Mm. So if this was handball, you know what, sod yeah. it, because <laughs> you get bad decisions, you get good decisions. I have to say that um, you, you say he bulldozed his way in, but I mean, the, he did finesse it in. You know, he actually, oh, the, the, the strike finish, was brilliant. Was absolutely, yeah, exactly, yeah. It, but just that uh, he didn't, other players wouldn't have, caught up, he catches them, it's like Man City, the way he, in the semi-final, it's the reaction time with Sanchez, it's just spotting something's there that other players don't necessarily see, and that's what it is, but that's what you get, but that's the difference between, you know, the very good player and, and the world-class player, isn't it? He just, he just like, there's an opportunity, I'm going to go for it, doesn't matter what's going to happen, yeah. I'm going to get in that situation, Short back and that he did it. Took, you know? Yeah, took Courtois by the side, and it kind of spun off, the, kind of outside of the boot, it was such an Yeah, lesser players, you would say, yeah. say it was a miskick, but with yeah. him, he probably wouldn't. <laughs> It's just, but it's momentum. What it gave you, people talk about end-to-end -end football. I don't really believe in end-to-end -end games. You know, it's very hard for two teams to have both momentum at the same time in a game. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. And that gave us, we had the momentum from the off, as we've all discussed. It, it just gave us the momentum. They were shell-shocked and they were below par. So when you're below par, the team you're playing against is above par and they have momentum. You know, you, you, you as a player must have huge confidence. I certainly as a fan in the crowd had, you know, had huge confidence at that point because we just had everything in our favour and they weren't at their best. I think it was a, I think it was a cowardly selection actually by, uh, uh, by Conte to, to not play Fabregas. You know, I would, I was, I was expecting it to be Conte and Fabregas. Um, and when he reverted to Matic in this game, you said they were too flat. They were playing the same position and they were, I, I thought they needed that as we had, as you said, referred to it as a split. They didn't have that. So that for them to get momentum back, it was going to be difficult. And it did prove so. Yeah, you boys, are, you, you pretty much nailed the goal, but I just, I have to come in because I just, what I was talking about, how, how quickly we were on top of the game and how, how strong and how fast we started and, and that build up to win the corner. When I watched it back again, I, I took notice of the, the players in positions. And when, when Courtois collects that, he's almost on the edge of the Chelsea box when he bowls it out. And Aaron Ramsey's actually in the six yard box. Yep. And, um, Conte takes his touch and begins to run and sort of has a mini collision with Costa or whatever happens. And then all of a sudden, Ramsey's there. And Ramsey of two months ago wouldn't have made that. He wouldn't have been quick enough. He wouldn't have been fit enough. He wouldn't have been intelligent enough. And that as a whole, summed up the way we started the game and to see him sprint back in there, not jog, he won't jog, he was sprinting full pace, won the ball, like I said, out to Monreal, brilliant from Nacho to get his head up. Ramsey retained his position. He, he, he sent Kante round a twist. He was going left, right, left, right. And then the give and go with Alexis. Alexis tries that ball. He tries that ball all the time, a bit short. But then, like Dave touched on, he, he's, he's like a kid in the playground at school, isn't he? he? He just wants it. He wants it. He wants the ball. I want the ball. Give me it, and he just goes. I mean, I couldn't tell from the other end. But first, I thought he can't be offside. He can't be offside. It must be handball. And then, obviously, we went from like they said, you go mental one second, and then you look up and you think, oh no. And then you see him going over. And then, but normally when goals are like that, the, the actual celebration's a bit bit subdued because you've already had the explosion, but it weren't at all. It was pandemonium and there were, just, <laughs> there were bodies everywhere, limbs. It was just unbelievable scenes and what a start to the game and we, we deserved that. We really yeah. did and I was so happy that we were switched on enough to, to, to really make them pay, pounce on any little mistake they made and as soon as they did make that mistake, we were there and we won the ball. Got a bit lucky, but like Axe said, we've had things in the past, but who cares? But 
it was just um, the way we started the game was the way we continued right the way through, and um, we, what a fantastic start! I think I think on that on that handball and offside, I mean the clue was because it was a Lino's flag. Yeah, you knew the Lino yeah. couldn't have seen that was exactly, handball mate. because there was players in the way. So so you kind of, that gave you an insight that okay he has definitely given it for offside, That's why I which is like what you, gave yeah. yeah, which is what gave us that hope that actually you know what he's going to give this because he we he can't have seen the handball. So it was, it was yeah. like video technology without a video, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, it was. Do you think though? I mean, Dave did say that you know. They were a bit harshly done by. I mean, I remember Jackie Jarson saying, "If you're if you're not interfering with play, play what you're doing on the pitch, or something like that, you shouldn't be on the pitch." You know, so and you know, you hear ex-professionals. Some of them do understand or do you know they 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 get this offside system. Others don't. I mean, where do you guys sit on it? I mean, obviously it worked for us. It played into our hands. But I think it's calmer. Yeah, I think it's calmer actually. I think uh, the last time we had a delayed reaction and a whistle against Chelsea. Um, we were expecting um, Bellerin, you know, having been stretched off for one of their players to be sent off and a goal disallowed, and they got a goal. When we were expecting a red card for their player, so karma. Pretty much. Don't you? I think. I think. I think. I think. <laughs> I think sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes you get them, sometimes yeah, you don't. That that's football. I mean, I I, I kind of watched the game again today, and and I saw a bit of the, the post game, and I think Thibaut Courtois in his interview. He, he he was obviously quite furious at, at the offside because he said if, if Aaron Ramsey's not there, he would have come out and collected it, which I, I'm not convinced he was on his toes enough to do that, to be honest. But then um, uh, Antonio Conte didn't really talk about the offside. He was more upset about the handball. Mm-hmm. So it, it's one of them that, you know, they're looking at it differently from the same team. So it, it's just one of those things. Yeah, cool. you know? um, so, OK, so... I just want to go back to our our players and whatnot, and the kind of you know the the, 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 the shift they put in. Um, oh, um, Akil, you was at the, the foundation ball just before the game, and you spoke to yeah, a few yeah. of them: Ramsey, Ox, Boss Binia. You know, you you, you, got, you got around as you usually do, made a nuisance mm. of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you pinned down Ox. Actually, you know what? You know, what? funny <laughs> enough, when you just mentioned that, you, you reminded me of actually, I. I I had um I'd actually gone to speak to Hector Bellerin um uh, because uh, we'll come on to Ox but I mean we had talked about the Palace game and uh, Oxo Chamberlain had kind of you know we asked him and said that did did you guys all think that the anger was actually directed at Bellerin or did you think it was at all of you and he kind of hinted that Bellerin thought it was at Bellerin and you know I, then I, I later on in the night when Bellerin was kind of going past I I had a quick chat with him and I, I gave him my thoughts thinking that actually from my point of view I thought it was at everyone because we were just so bad that night and you know he he was obviously really appreciative and, and stuff like that and in fact there was he did an interview in the Daily Mail where he actually said fans have come up to me and said it wasn't directed at me but at everyone but I still have to be strong enough so I like to think I was one of those fans but the, the, the funny thing was Ospina was next to him and, and it, it was kind of when I, I'd spent a, you know five minutes talking to Bellerin and, and, and not even a second with Ospina I felt a little bit bad and thought I need to do something token here because it's just rude otherwise so I kind of went Ospina you know it, it if you do go this summer, you know, we, we do wish you the best of luck and you'd be nothing but professional and all that sort of stuff. And I said, and you know what? If you play the cup final, good luck. You know, you, it'll be nice for you to get a winning medal. And I kind of said that in a bit of jest, really. I just said that because I didn't know what else to say. I, I don't, I didn't awkward. actually believe he would play. Yeah, it was just one of those awkward things. I just wanted it to be nice, you know. And funny enough, as soon as, you know, the news came out in jars, we, we were together on Friday evening. And when the news came out, I actually thought, oh, shit, <laughs> it's actually happened now. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was, that was interesting. But I mean, Oxo Chamberlain, he was obviously on our table. Um, so we had a good sort of half an hour discussion with him. And this was when he knew he would be fit for the cup final. This was just before the Everton game. He, he told us that he's not going to be in the squad for Everton, but he's, he's definitely fit for the cup final. Um, and then we kind of talked about positions as well. Um, and, and, you know, he made it clear, as he did again on BT Sports, actually, with Rio and, and Steven Gerrard, that he, he kind of, centre midfield is definitely where he wants to be. But but I, I kind of asked him, and funny enough, he said something similar on the interview, that I asked him that, and I said that, but you're so good at taking people on. 
you know, on that right hand side, I think of when he left Rashford on his ass, or when he got half a yard and and and, and Monreal got the goal at Wembley. I just said that you know you look so good there that you know you keep working there. You can be you can be fantastic there. And then he kind of talked about yeah, he's played right back, he's played on the left, he's done this, he's done that, and he, he actually said that the left side is completely sort of not alien to him, but it, it's quite it's different. You know, because he can't get round the outside. And then obviously what happens? He plays left. Um, but, you know, he, he was kind of one of those that he just, it looks like he'll put in 100% wherever he plays. He just wants, he just wants to play and, and he, he's trying to get a position kind of in this team where that will be. He doesn't know. We don't know. Um, but it was interesting to see kind of with Ospina and Otse Chamberlain how it actually turned out. Um, Dave, Ospina, um, you had no doubt in your mind just going on history that he would start in goal um, yeah, I, I, did, and I, 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 I never I never really I never had a comment about I never really had anything to say about him being in goal but I mean a lot of people were like ah oh, you know they, they weren't pleased basically a lot of people were not pleased and they were pretty convinced that it was the wrong selection I mean just talk about briefly about you know his performance guys like Mertesacker who only played 37 minutes before the game obviously had an Ox playing in an unfamiliar position you know well bit playing up front I mean just just Quickly, briefly, just tell us what you know what you thought of their performances. Well, I didn't think Ospina did anything wrong. In fact, he made some, some crucial saves at some important times. Uh, I, I mean, we 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 we, zo- we zoom in on some some very very poor mistakes he's made. But if you actually look across the piece, they are they're quite rare. You know, he's, he's certainly I don't think there's too many better second choice keepers in the Premier League. To be fair. So I didn't have a massive issue. I think the people people had an issue purely because suddenly in the last two months, Petr Cech seems to be back to the form that he probably showed when he first joined us and the form he showed when he was winning you know, titles at Chelsea. Uh, earlier in the season, people were, were doubting Cech and suggesting we should be you know, going after you know, uh, Joe Hart or similar. So it, I thought it was a bit of a false, false um, you know, anger. Uh, it was just one of those things. I don't think it was ever going to be a decision that was going to cost us the game. Uh, and thankfully, it didn't. As for Mertesacker, I just, I just defies belief. I've never been his biggest fan. Uh, it's well known, but you know, fantastic. But he was just. Uh, I mean, I do think. But what I, I wrote a column today, and what I find odd, however, is this ridiculous love fest between Per and, and Arsene. You know, since the cup final. You know, let's let's get this straight. Per Mertesacker has been fully fit for four months. Yeah. We've played against two non-league sides, Southampton reserves, in the FA Cup, and he hasn't given him a minute. So, you know, this is this is a player who has effectively been discarded by his manager, whatever is being said subsequently by Wenger or, or Bermersacker. So, you know, I don't feel to get any credit or anything. This is a, this was a last gasp desperation measure when he had no one else to turn to. Thank God for him that Bermersacker stepped up to the plate in such incredible fashion. Because I, I mean, I'm not certainly not giving any credit there. But, you know, to, to the manager, but to Per, absolutely unbelievable. Um, and I'm sure Nacho and, and Rob Holden enjoyed having him there. You know, the way he talks, the assurance he showed on the ball. Um, in fact, I think, uh, I think Diego Costa probably would have rather seen Koscielny and Gabriel and, and, and Mustafi based on recent appearances. I, I don't definitely, think definitely he wasn't able to get in Rob, the Rob Holden's in, yeah. head. And Rob Holden got yeah. in his head, not the other way around. Costa yeah. couldn't, he didn't understand it. He's so used to bullying Arsenal central defenders. Suddenly he was playing against two that he's probably never played against. He didn't expect, well, certainly didn't expect to be playing against them on, sun, on Saturday. And they were fantastic. Um, and you said, ask me about Welbeck. I'm talking too long here. But I just thought, Welbeck is my favourite player right now. I just think he just gives us such a different dimension. I mean, it's not, it's not the goal scoring opportunities. You know, it was just the pace the non-stop running in the channels, the hold-up play, which everyone would say is Giroud's strength, was fantastic on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Even to uh, the experience that allowed himself to be fouled continuously, he just was the unsung hero of Saturday for me, Danny Welbeck. Yeah. And I have to say, however, I did turn around to Chris and say, why on earth is he taking Welbeck off and bringing Giroud on? And what happened a minute later? <laughs> 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 okay, Over to you, Boz. <laughs> okay, going back to the first half was, I mean... Um, Look, we, we scored the first, the first goal early. We had a number of opportunities, you know, uh, I, I remember, I think one of the first ones after the goal was, was Welbeck header in, Welbeck header from the corner, it glanced, it kind of, right, and then Ramsey with the back stick and it just got, I, I think the, mm. the bounce of the post kind of boxed him, kind of flummoxed him, didn't he? And he couldn't really direct it in. There was another opportunity, Welbeck on the left. Uh, so it was- 
Ozil's dink yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah cleared off the line. Mm. Yeah, uh, well back on the left. Um, got through, I think it was Bellerin that actually played through. Played it was yeah. Bellerin, yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, he couldn't control his shot. But I mean, a lot of that, um, that, 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 that point in the game, you were thinking, we need daylight, don't you? You were actually thinking, if we don't get daylight, because Chelsea can't play this bad in the second half, you, we, you were worried that, you know, all this good work might not come to anything. I mean, how, were you desperate at that point? Did you yeah, feel well, that, you know, it was in any mate, balance? I'll, I'll tell you something now that I definitely didn't expect us to be as creative and, and get in as much as we did. And we were just fantastic. And everything for me really stemmed from, stemmed from the, the midfield two of Xhaka and Ramsey. They, they bossed Matic and Kante off the park and it, Xhaka, Jacker was phenomenal and, and we discussed people like Ospina and that, but yeah, we were, we were having chances and that Welbs one was so unlucky. If his, if his touch was just right and as Dave touched on, he was so magnificent. He run and run and run the channels. He was intelligent. He'd done everything right. He just didn't stick it in the net. And if that comes with Welbeck, he'll be, he'll be one of the best strikers in the Premier League. That is, and that is a fact. But the fitter he's getting and, and the stronger he's getting, he's perfect to play that role, I think, in this formation. But yeah, we, we just didn't put one away. And like you said, the header off the post and just bounced off and we were unlucky. And, and for me, a massive, massive moment in the first half was, and we talked about Ospina, but his save from Diego Costa. Rob Holding got a bit lost. He got yeah. isolated and he got lost and Costa got in behind. And he, a great strike from Costa and it was brave. It was strong. He was big and he was there and he got hurt. But he made that save, and if that goes one-one, then then it's a different game. And it was so big to get through to half-time, even though we were creating chances, even though we were by far the better team. It was just so important for me to to see it through. And and so often you've seen us after we concede one chance, and, and we get we just start going all a bit funny. But I think Per Mertesacker, man, I, I cannot say enough words for this guy. I mean, I know we've touched on him, but the bloke is six foot seven. He's, he's been out for God knows he ain't kicked a ball all season. He stepped into the biggest game of the season against the champions and he's just bossed it. He's just stood there and smiled and laughed. He was cutting out everything, winning sliding tackles. Just, he was an absolute monster of a man in there. And we talk about not having leaders at this football club, but my God, did he put in a captain's performance. He was so, so good and everyone to a man and, I'll just before we do go on, Ox, I've got to say, I've been very critical of Ox over the season and since he's gone to right wing back, he's improving game by game. But I'll tell you something now, I was devastated to see him have to play on the left and I was really worried. I was thinking this is going to catch us. But I'll tell you what, barring the odd occasion, he was absolutely sensational at Club Chamberlain. He worked so hard, he concentrated more than, he's, than I've ever seen him do. Because normally for me, that's his downfall, that he just gets lost in games and mentally he's not quite there. But I'll tell you something, like Dave touched on earlier, playing left wing and right wing, yeah, OK, you should be able to do that. To defend at left back and defend at right back is very difficult. You've got to change your body shape. Everything's got to be different. The way you see the game, you're looking at across the other side of the pitch. And he just took to it. And, and I think Per helped glue everyone together with Monrose, the left back next to him, and, and Robbie Holding, the, the young lad. I mean and a couple of times he was sensational but it was just a brilliant team performance and, and I noticed I, I, just to kind of was carry on in a second I noticed that actually Monreal was doing a lot of talking with Oxlade Chamberlain it's yeah. something I, I watched for about four or five minutes I think it was in the second half but he, he was constantly talking and pointing at him just like he was kind of guiding him through which I thought was you know you mentioned leadership and, and someone like Monreal doesn't strike you as a leader but he kind of is this quite a solid, dependable player. I know he had a bit of a blip earlier in the season, but he just kind of, he seems like one of those that does does talk a bit and does, you know, he, I know it's easy to say, but he looks like he, he does care. And and I, I was really impressed at the way he kind of was helping Chamberlain yeah, through the game. Sorry, you no, know, you're spot on there, mate. I think it's funny. It's almost as if he's watching himself, right? if you know what I mean. So he, he's been playing that position so well, Mon that yeah, left yeah, back. Yeah, and it's yeah. almost as if he sat there looking at Ox going, this is where you need to be. I'll be there. And he, he's, he's, he's able to give him that instruction and it's big credit to him. But yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll move on. I've chatted for ages about these players, but it's yeah. just, it's just, I'm just excited and happy that we've ended the season like this. And we ain't seen Arsenal do that in so long, have we? And I haven't even spoke Ramsey yet, so carry on. Yeah, exactly. We'll come on to them. <laughs> we'll come on to that midfield duo. Um, for me, per Matasaka, give, give him a pipe slippers. 
an armchair. He was immense. You know, I mean, there was a couple of times, I think where you, you said, um, Costa had the, uh, the chance that that was one of the few times they got the long diag over the back of us, over the top of us in behind us. Yeah. And, you know, holding was a little bit lost and whatnot. But, you know, aside from that, I thought the, the back five were imperious to, uh, on, on Saturday. Um, also, Welbeck for me was absolutely brilliant. I mean, he's running. And I said that, you know, chatting, you know, on Friday we did that piece with the Chelsea fans of Axe for ITM. Yeah, yeah. I was chatting to a couple of Chelsea fans and they actually said their weak point was their right hand side. You know, that if they, if, you know, if there's one place that a lot of teams don't really exploit, it's that right hand side. And I thought Welbeck and, and, and Co really, really did the, Welbeck ran his bollocks off on Saturday. You know, he caused, um, he took, he took, he constantly took Louise and, and Aspilicueta out left into deep waters. They didn't like it. He was stretching them. He was pulling them. And I think it was a perfect, it was a fantastic, it was a monumental front man display. He was constantly our out ball. As Dave said, he was fighting. He knew when to draw the tackle. He knew when to spin in behind. He, you know, he, he, he dragged, um, Moses with him. It was an unbelievable display from him. Um, selfless display. And also in midfield, I think, you know, the, 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 the two, the split. I mean, Ramsey, that was Ramsey's game. That was Ramsey's kind of game for me. You know, one where he can get up and down, you know, use his engine, use his intelligence. I think his ball, his use of the ball was absolutely brilliant. He was smart with the ball. Um, the, the way that he came. And joining the attack late was brilliant, and you know he just they just ran their midfield two off the pitch. I couldn't believe it. Um, I think I, I think we know what's coming yeah. now, so I'm just going to put the camera on. <laughs> while, while, while was was takes the next twenty minutes. Dave, fancy yeah, yeah. <laughs> two sugar. <laughs> you boy, so, Dave. So, <laughs> so it was second half. Um, we knew that Chelsea would come out. <clears throat> they couldn't play as badly as they did in the first half. But second half, take it away. I mean, that midfield duo, just how good were they? And, you know, kudos to Wenger. I mean, he set them up. He said to them, Look, let's split ya. You know, um, I thought, I thought Shaka mm. was absolutely as a conscientious midfielder getting back. I think it, for me, I've always worried about his mobility getting back. You know, being not defensively aware, but he was absolutely colossal to that on Saturday. And then obviously Ramsey as well. Just take it away. Go on. Yeah, no, no. Just um, just with that midfield too, what you're saying about the split, I think you're actually spot on. And I've, I've Are cried you, out for that. You've said it before. Mate, you've I've cried it. out for it so many oh, times. The stagger, yeah. the split, the link. And and with Meza Ozil playing almost in that, that inside right role, what often happens is where they're staggered and split, Ramsey goes on, but Ozil drops in and becomes... Mm. The second ball, second ball playing midfielder. So it, it, the triangles between them, and sorry, the four players. I know that ain't a triangle. That's a square. But you've got Alexis. Could be a rhombus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've got literally you've got Alexis, Özil, Xhaka, and Ramsey, and the four of them manipulated Matic and Kante. They didn't know whether to press high. Xhaka was just sat in beautifully, just sat in beautifully. The amount of times Matic was worried and he pressed because they know if you give Xhaka the time to play the ball. We've got dangerous players higher up the pitch and he can go diagonal long. He can play through the line short. And if they don't stop it at source, then they're in trouble. So then with the stagger, it meant that Ramsey was picking up positions. Ozil was getting the ball. Alexis was finding space. They didn't know whether to come or go. And, and just the stagger between Xhaka deep and Ramsey, that, that box to box man, it works. It just works. And whether it's the formation that helps, whether it's the fact we're more solid, but it works. And it is, I mean, that is it. That is it. It's the formation. That well, stagger, it's a big help, that stagger, Dave. That stagger wouldn't work in, a, in the 4 2 3 1. Well, you know, not, 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 not if you're no. um, relying on your fullbacks to be highly advanced like we have done. I completely no. agree because it's no, been it's, a well, danger this, game. This, this, this formation is giving those, those two the right platform. You know, I, I know Certainly. you wanted to play together all season. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen this working. It hasn't worked earlier in the season. But I think the other factor that a lot of people are ignoring, including myself, and I've been doing a bit of research on the man because I knew he'd be talking about it. But Ramsey, Ramsey in that season when he was so good was the fittest player in the team and injury free at that, yeah. in that long period. I'm starting to wonder how, if he's ever been close to fully fit in the last three years because the player I'm watching now is not the same player I've seen for the last two and a half seasons. Even when he's been regularly in the team, forgetting the partner, forgetting the, oh, it's not the right partner for him. Aaron Ramsey of the last two or three weeks is a different player than the one I've seen the last two and a half seasons. And I'm starting to think it's partly discipline in the formation and he's not trying the long balls, he's not trying the silly flicks, which which we know. But I think it's the fact he's back to being 
the incredibly fit player. Like him and Alexis are the two players that are obviously fitter than everyone else on the Arsenal yeah. side. I don't think Ramsey's been that fit since 2014. And I think that's the to be honest. Man. To be honest, Dave, it's been coming. I mean, if you, how many minutes have they played together now in this formation? Is it 1,000 plus minutes uh, was? Yeah, 1,000. Yeah, over 1,000 now. And they've sort yeah. of been the mainstay of this, yeah. of this change to the three at the back. And it's just, they have I been mean, the constants, haven't they? They've been the constant, the constant, the constant two, really. Yeah, Dave, barring, um, Dave, give or take Coquelin. Yeah, no. just what Dave said then about fitness, I think he's absolutely spot on. And not just physically fit, he's mentally fit again. And that's something that when Ramsey's mentally fit and he's switched on, like Dave said, he, I think when he's not mentally fit, he tries too hard. He, mm. he tries too hard. He's trying to find the killer ball. He's trying to make things happen. Stay it just job. happens naturally. Yeah. It just happens naturally now. And when he does fit, he, he's doing things. He's thinking. He's, 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 oh, it's just, it's nice to see him back like that, but it's not, um, that Xhaka gives him such a platform to perform and, and, and Meza Ozil and Alexis Sanchez are on a wavelength and the whole system works and it is, it's good to see. But yeah, I don't know if you read it, it was the most, it, the longest distance run recorded ever in the yeah. history of the FA Cup final. 14.4 14 kilometres, mate. That's yeah. incredible. Absolutely incredible. Bearing in mind, he's playing against the, um, the PFA Premier League player of the season yeah. who is meant to be roadrunner who no one can get away from. Ramsey just made him look like mincemeat, mate. He just dealt with him. And that was all all down to the system and the whole team as a whole. Not Aaron Ramsey. It was about everyone. It was a fantastic collective performance. But well, I wrote that yeah. blog a few weeks ago saying if Ramsey is prepared to do it, he can do what Kante does. He can, he's, he's the only player in the Arsenal squad who's got the energy to do what Kante does. And I'm not, I'm not saying take away the advanced stuff he does as well, but he has the fitness and the energy and when, when he's fully fit to be everywhere on the pitch. No one else in the Arsenal squad has got that. I, I want to come back. I want to come back on this point. Um, Was has always said if you define their roles, give them definition to their roles, give them the resp- responsibilities, you'll you'll see the benefit from it. And if you if, if you boil down Ramsey's role, don't give him too much. He's not the long pass maker. He's not the line breaker in terms of passing. You know, um, he's a man that gets forward. He's a third man runner. He's a man that you know in that final third he creates he creates havoc. And I. We boiled down in this in this in this system. The platform we've given him is he's boiled down his role. Is 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 what is is um his role and and, and um, uh, job description is, and we're getting the benefit from it. I mean, if you look at his wagon wheel, um, I, I think they call it a football radar, is what I call it, a, a wagon wheel. I mean, you see where his key attributes lay. It's not in playing as the first receiver at DM. It's not in um, really being the creative hub of the team. It's getting up and down, getting forward, you know, being that extra body, being the, 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 the person that kind of comes in at the last minute in the final phase and creating that little bit of havoc. And I think we saw that in its abundance on Saturday. Um, the, uh, they mentioned that Conte was a bit cowardly not starting Fabregas. Matic and, Co- and Conte looked absolutely ordinary. I mean, given, you know, despite the fact that, you know, Ramsey and, and Xhaka made him look ordinary. They were they were so flat. They were so uninspiring. And and Hazard it reminded me of like El Nenny and Cochrane in yeah. some games. Yeah. You know when you just didn't look like you could, there was no creativity in it. It, it just looked very just bland. Spot on that is that. But you know we were very lucky. Yeah. We were very lucky in the timing of uh, the sending off actually. Because he just yeah. made that change, and there was plenty of time eleven v eleven for Fabregas to do what we all know he can do, and then. With, it, with a minute of him coming on, they're down to 10 men. So I think we were quite fortunate there, actually. <laughs> Give Anthony Taylor some props for um, yeah. that, that, that decision, right? Because oh, a lot of people said, oh, well, is he going to behave? Is he going to have the running battle with Wenger and blah, blah, blah? You know, but um, it was a spot on it. was Because I was worried. I thought it was a penalty. I thought oh, you knew straight away, though, didn't he? You saw it. Yeah, he, he did, yeah. He knew he hadn't touched it. Yeah, and then when you saw it, there was also the, the, there was a Chelsea player actually who was very close who did not appeal. It may have been Hazard, but don't quote me on that. But there was a Chelsea player who didn't appeal for it, and he's the one I I don't know one of those weird things where I just spotted him straight away, and the fact that he just turned around. It, it can't have been think, Hazard. You know what? Now penalty area. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a real it was a real cop out on uh, Moses' part. I mean, it was blatant cheating, and I think it was you know as um, Taylor was spot on. So they've got a man sent off, they've brought on, they've taken off Matt, she was absolutely non-existent for Fabricas, and you're thinking, well, you know, obviously we're going to see the long diags pinging over the top, but the fact that we've got the spare, but it was always a spare man, wasn't it? Always a spare man, and I mean, that works into our favour, and that merely nullified 
Fabregas's is. Um, I think there was a there was one point where they got in. I think before Costa's goal, I think he had a chance before that maybe. Um, it was Victor Moses. Uh, well, with Victor Moses, had a shot on the right, didn't he? Before he got sent off, and uh, Spina yeah, got down Spina well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Um, going down to ten men was, or, um, you know, did you think that this is it? You know, we can, we, we you know, we, we you know, all we got to do is just prioritise our attacks, you know, and, and you know, pick them off. Yeah, and, I thought so. I wasn't worried. We were, we were so good though, weren't we? We were so good for the whole yeah. game. You just saw it go to 10 men, but I just, you just get flashbacks of all these bad things that have happened in your life. <laughs> and you're stood there. <laughs> and you're just finishing. This enough, is of it. Your, like, enough of your personal life. Yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're thinking about being in the pub, drop, knocking that beer over and all that. No, it's just so difficult. Like, you just won nil up against Chelsea, FA Cup final. They're down to 10 men. You've been fantastic the whole game. Stick or twist, have you got the bollocks? Can you hold on? They're going to be coming at you. It's exciting. It was set up and it was, oh, the, the, the feeling of being in that stadium. I'm pretty sure everyone across the world watching it, wherever they were, were feeling mm. exactly the same. The tension, the, the excitement, but the, almost in the back of your mind, just knowing that we've not been great this season and, and could we capitulate? And we conceded and then, oh. Well, I'll and let that's someone the thing, talk that about that. One goal. Time, that was the one time. That was the one time that Costa really got free of of, of Mertesacker. He got himself up against um, Holding, and some people said the Holding was a bit weak. Some people said the Spinny was on, like kind of a bit flat on his line. He should have he should have been able to save the shot. But I mean, it was the one time, and it, you know, it, it, my my heart sank because we were never, you know, we didn't take our opportunities, and there was always that there was always that. Doubt, nagging doubt in the back of your mind, and he scores the equaliser, and they've gone absolutely potty up the blue end. And you're thinking, well, I thought, oh, flip, you know, um, all we need now is for them to come and snatch it. You I know, bet he didn't but, um, think, oh, I bet he didn't think, oh, flip. Well, yeah, I didn't say, oh, <laughs> I said, I, there was another, F, there was another four letter word starting with F. I, I didn't, you, know I mean? <laughs> you know, but, um, Dave, I mean, just how important was it? I mean, that we went up the other. Did you expect us to go straight back up the other end and score? I mean, how, just how, just how, how Well, as I said, you know, the, the last player you expect to be in that position, putting in a cross like that, is Olivier Giroud, let's face it. So no, I didn't expect that. I was just annoyed that Welbeck had been taken off. Not that Giroud had come on. I just thought, you know, I just wasn't expecting Welbeck. I know he'd run himself into the ground. But, uh, I, I was just so glad that when there was at the end that we were at, you know, just the celebration and, I would liken it to, I think you were there probably after the old Trafford game in 2015. And you felt like when, when Welbeck went through, you felt like you had, yeah, you were yeah, sucking yeah. the ball into the net. Yeah. And as soon yeah. as that cross left Giroud's foot, I thought we were going to score. You, you, saw, Ram, you saw Ramsey yeah. running. You yeah. saw the space. Especially you in saw, our block. You saw the Dave. overlap in our block. Exactly. You're, you're, on, you're behind the goal. You see it's almost in mm. slow motion. You're thinking, we just won the FA Cup. We just won the FA Cup. And, and it's just coming in. You know, you know. You just know, and you just feel like it's when you really feel part of you connected to a game when you're so close to it. You, you feel like you're part of it. You feel like you're sucking that ball into the net, and it's just that moment. It's just incredible. You can't describe it. it. In that, in that, in that sort of, the, you know, Sanchez obviously put Pre-assist, put Giroud, yeah. Sort great of, ball, yeah. Great. But, it, yeah. but, but yeah, but it was one of those where when he first hit it initially, it, I, I thought, oh, well, he does know well, but it's gone off, doesn't he? Because it's yeah. not, it's not a Giroud type of ball. But I think the fresh legs. Just and and you know it, that's that it does take a bit of character to to concede and then to sort of react straight away and even not just in that those sort of three three passes or the three, three man move but even before that in the midfield Shaka gave it to Özil who gave it back to Shaka who then gave it wide we still the way we were passing it in that midfield uh, straight after kickoff was still an air of confidence yeah. there was still something there and yeah. you talked about the sending off. I felt in the stands and I felt in the Arsenal end that that was when people actually believed. You know, people people were hopeful at 1-0 and as time was going, but that was the, that sending off was the time where people started to believe. And actually, the Costa goal, yeah, it was a bit of kick in the teeth, but I, I, I didn't sense that belief when no, then. I, I still felt Arsenal will come back and win this game. I think most of the crowd did as well because of, of Victor Moses' sending off. And then, as I said, that air of confidence in, in the centre of midfield just, just re- reconfirmed that sort of... Uh, uh, that It just looked like it was our day. And then, obviously, the, uh, as what Dave said about the goal, I mean, just to, just to sort of yeah back him up there, we were in block 112 and we were right behind it. And that, that 
it took an age that Giroud bought it felt like it just took four days to get there because we all saw it that you know what Ramsey's getting in there and he split them he's getting in there and he's going to score here and it was just you know there was I think a few of us had our hands in the air well when it left Giroud's kind of foot and something maybe he hasn't got credit for was that cross that sort no of look pass. cross no look cross it was just yeah it was just I mean he could be gambled he gambled that someone will be running yeah in, you should do but it, it, it well, Ramsey... but he didn't smash it across he didn't it, it, it was it was Perfect. You know what he said? You know, if you listen to after the game, Ramsey after the game, he said that Giroud put it in there knowing that it probably it would be Ramsey going in there. You know, he put it in that area knowing yeah, that if there's one player in there that might get there, it might well be Ramsey. I mean, anyway, Ros, over to you. What's that your goal. breakdown? The goal, the, the, the moment in time that the, the whole, after conceding, thinking the emotions for me were so mixed. I was just round a little bit round the corner for you in 115 and I, I I didn't know what to think because we were playing 10 men and they got back in the game and they didn't touch the ball, by the way. They did not touch the ball. We kicked off, kept the ball and, I mean, you two have summed it up brilliantly, but just the emotion as a fan, the feeling, the the, the moment in time when, when Giroud, you see Sanchez play the pass and obviously you, you're you watching Sanchez at the time and you see it and like Axe said, you think, oh, shit, that's a heavy ball. And you see Giroud go and, and you see him just put it up and it, and they're saying that the time just stops. It's almost as if the whole world just goes in slow motion and you can just, you hear the, cr- the crowd. It's almost like everyone's going, go on. Like it, it just raises up. And then, the, I mean, I headed it in the net myself. I think about, about a thousand people around me all done the same thing. It's like almost everyone jumped to, to head the ball. And, and when he does it, when he does it, when he scores that goal and it just seems the, the it's just, Unbelievable. I don't know where I ended up. It was just, <laughs> it was just such a great, you're cuddling everyone and anyone you can. I, I, I was miles away from my seat. Everyone just going bonkers for, for not just, not just the, the 10 seconds during the goal, just for the entirety of the celebration. And it just felt so good to respond that quick. And we deserved it the way we played during that day. And it was one moment where we conceded, but. Wow, what a response to conceding. I don't know if you guys have seen it. I, I watched it a little bit earlier on um, on Twitter. Someone's made a video of the 1979 Cup final. Mm. The goal, the seconds are identical. Well, Alan Sunderland. Alan Sunderland's, Sunderland's goal Sunderland. from when we kick off. From when we kick off, you, there's the two videos are side by side and the timing of when the ball's crossed in and it's finished wow. are identical from kick off. It is insane. It is absolutely insane. And, <laughs> and the, the, I'll, I'll just you make sure you watch it because it's just it's frightening how how it's like that. But I will just want to give a massive, massive <laughs> clap to Olivier Giroud because yeah. I'll tell you something now. He took a lot of stick as an Arsenal player, and some of it deserved, some of it not. But I'll tell you something now: three cup finals, two brilliant assists to win it, one goal. You got you got to take your hat up, but hat off to him. And, and and like we've discussed, the delivery was instinctive, but. The only man, and I'll talk about it in a minute about Aaron Ramsey before we go, but yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. I just don't, I don't think, had we, had we had Elneny or Coquelin on the pitch that, or, or maybe Santi, I don't think anyone would have been in that position, but that's the risk sometimes you've got to take. But yeah, I mean, what a moment. And, 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 and after that, we sort of cantered away, I think. We, we, we were fantastic for the next sort of 12 minutes. So do you think we should try and give Ramsey a new contract then? <laughs> or would you think we should give him another year's trial? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll, t- oh, I'll get it out of the way now. I'll get it out of the way now while we're here on it. I just want to say about Aaron Ramsey. I think the boy, the man he's become. Two sugars, Dave? Yeah, two yeah, sugars? Was it milk as well? I won't make it long, but I'll tell you something now. Was it milk? He's shown so much heart, so much bottle, so much fight. The lad joined Arsenal. He, he turned down Man United. He joined us when he was 17. He was becoming a wonderful player, breaking into the first team before that horrible incident. A lot of players ain't come back from that. We lost Eduardo. We lost, um, oh, who else? Yeah, sorry. No, we, we, we lost Abu Dio. Yeah, but yeah, you know what I mean? We lost yeah. him as a footballer. And, and, and Ramsey battled back. He went on loan to the championship. He come back. The, the story was written. The script was done. He scored the winner in the FA Cup final. Then the next season, you think he's going to kick on. He loses fitness. He gets niggling hamstring injuries. He's playing right wing. He's out of position. Two and a half years later, everyone's looking at him going, his player's gone now. He, he, he's, he's, same things happen. He's recurring injuries. He's done what the RB's done. He's done. Then he comes back again. 
10 games in a row alongside Xhaka. What does he do? He scores the winning goal in the FA Cup final again. And I'll tell you something now, whatever happens, if he never kicks another ball for Arsenal Football Club, I'll be forever grateful and, and proud of what that man's achieved in his career because he's been through a lot, not just physically, but mentally. And hats off to him for coming back. And I'm just glad that it was him that scored the winner. And I couldn't care who scored it, to be fair, but I was just so delighted for Aaron Ramsey personally because he took a lot of stick and, again, well, a lot of it is deserved. You, you, you can also throw in the uh, losing his mentor to suicide. You know, well, exactly, mate. Well. And that was losing yeah. his captaincy yeah. for, for the national yeah. side. And, and let's not forget, in the summer, he was in the, Euro, uh, the European Championship team of the, team of the tournament. So, yeah. look, he's no mug. If he can stay fit and he continues in his formation, then there's very, very few out there that will suit our suit us and suit Jacker better than Aaron Ramsey, but brilliant. Just brilliant from everyone and and then like I said, the last twelve minutes we were we were fantastic and we were creating chances at will. I mean when you see uh Cockerland doing step overs by the corner flag. Yeah. You know, you know it's you know you're in dreamland, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, um El Nini had that chance towards the end and you're like, go on shoot and he stepped inside and you're like, oh, oh. Right, so you and that was the longest four minutes, wasn't it? The longest four minutes of injury time I think I've ever. Come I do. Up, I right? do think. I do think Ozil didn't need to step inside. However cool yeah. it was, and however, however, you know, cool and calculated it was to do it, he didn't need to do it. He could have shot past. He should have should have shot across the keeper. That would have been three one. But I mean, if he had gone in, it would have been an excellent goal because he'd done yeah. the keeper with his absolutely. eyes. Absolutely. But at right, that stage, yeah. against a tired defence, I don't think it was necessary to be honest. With you. Always, Dave, bringing the mood down. Oh, come on. <laughs> Ozil, Ozil had a brilliant game. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Right. And like you said, tired, mate. He was absolutely fantastic. Well, exactly. Like you said, yeah. tired, mate. He was tireless, wasn't he? Yeah. He was unbelievable. But he, 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 he was, as, as was said earlier, he very much does step in and make that third midfielder and, and help us in the transition, you know, when uh, uh, whenever it required. He loves dropping DB or turn. He'll drop his shoulder and he's gone. Uh, and yeah. uh, if he played like that every week, no one would be doubting him. Arsenal fans don't. Some do, but... The media and everyone else doubts the guy. If he played like that every week, then he would be the world's best number 10. But let's, let's how, do get, how do we get our players to play like this every week? <laughs> final word as we're wrapping up. Uh, uh, final word, I think he has to go to Wenger. For, uh, seven times a winner. Outright um, wingiest manager in the FA Cup competition. That's 13 FA Cups. Start with you, Dave, because you just um, uh, just were just on the mic a minute ago. Yeah, what I mean, I'm, uh, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not... We've all been... Quit school of Wenger. Uh, um, I, I just, I find it hard to encapsulate. When I see him on the pitch with the players at the end of the game celebrating, my, my guard drops and, and I find myself reverting to the, ah, oh, it's Arsene Wenger. He's done so much to the club. I love the guy. You know, and then I take a step back two or three days later and I start thinking, well, why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? You know, why, why has it taken us all year to produce a performance like that? I, I, you know, so I just want to enjoy the moment I want him to enjoy the moment um, and l- let's just see what happens I mean it's an incredible achievement to win th- to win forget the seven to win three FA Cups in four years and and we've beaten virtually every top side um, you know we've had some early draws that were quite you know quite easy for us this time around but we've beaten the two of the top sides in the country in, in the semi-final and final you know, on the run previously we beat Tottenham Everton Liverpool the way to the final so we haven't done it the easy way it's not an easy competition to win and it's a phenomenal achievement um, but as Anna and Ramsey said in 2015 in the press conference, you know, we've got to step on and start winning and challenging the league. That's the next step. So let's wait and see what comes out of the board meeting. Was, uh, your, your, your thoughts? Yes, mate. Um, I'm still bored of Arsene Wenger. I still, my stance hasn't changed. I'm very, the last three years for me, I mean, we can't take away the trophies and magnificent. I'm delighted for Arsene. I love the man. I've always said that. Yes, sometimes my frustrations boil over, but this this guy has done so much for me as a football fan, and and so much for so many people, and and, and let alone Arsenal Football Club. But the se- season as a whole, not been good enough. I mean, missing out in the Champions League, terrible. Our well, performance in Europe, terrible. I mean, we ain't played well pretty much all season. But do you know something? We plugged away. We scraped through the FA Cup. We got through the semi final. And we saved our best performance of the entire season till last. And, and like Dave said, to see Arson on that pitch with all the players respecting him, kissing Ozil, Sanchez looking up to him, they love him. It's, it's, it's a beautiful story. And, and we've seen this before, but that I love Arson for what he's done. I do think personally, I still think it's time to go. But as Dave said, I do want to enjoy this moment and see what comes out of the board meeting. But it's just frustrating seeing Arsenal perform the way they have done for the last sort of 10 games, knowing that 
what could have been for the rest of the season. And unfortunately for me, it does boil back down to the manager. But look, we've won the cup. We're Arsenal Football Club. We've won three in four years. And Wenger is the all-time greatest manager in the history of the FA Cup. And no one can take that away from him. Not yet, anyway. Axe, over to you for your thoughts. Yeah, it, it's one of those, it's one of those things where I think you, you, you have to enjoy the moment. And, and in terms of, of seven FA Cups, I mean, if you look at his last four seasons in, in the FA Cup, what? He's lost one game. And that was at home to Watford. And yet, you know, people, this season, people talk about sort of we beat two non-league sides and, and, you know, we beat a, a Southampton reserve side and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, if you look at the, the last four years, He's beaten Chelsea, he's beaten Man City, he's won at Old Trafford, he's beaten Spurs, he's beaten Liverpool, he's beaten Everton. You know, there's some top sides there that he that he's won at. So it, it's one of those that in a cup competition, or well, certainly domestic, maybe not in Europe, but domestically he, he can still get the best out of the side in these kind of one-off games. It, it's in that sort of 38-game league season which is kind of the problem and that's where the consistency hasn't been there that's where you know we've gone on we've sometimes just not turned up that's when we've started slow um and 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 that's that's been the the problem i mean as for the future i mean now it's it's kind of one of those weird times as a football fan isn't it and 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 as an arsenal fan because sort of all the pro like all the protests planes whatever else happened it's kind of over now because there are no more games there's no real media spotlight now they, they, it's kind of now over to the club to see what they're gonna do um and you know that it, 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 it's pretty much as simple as there's three options one is he goes Two is he stays, but with with some changes around him. And three is he stays and nothing else really changes. I guess maybe the fourth would be he stays and another sort of board member leaves, maybe. Um, but it's coming to a stage where you think he's, he is probably going to stay. Um, and I guess, you know, as a football fan, I, I just hope, or as an Arsenal fan, sorry, not, not just as a football fan, but, but I guess I hope that there will be some changes around him and, and, and we start looking at a proper succession plan. Um, because even if he went tomorrow, you know, and, and we, we got a new manager in, I think the structure at board level, the structure around the, the first team, I'm not quite sure it's, 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 it's there. And I think even a new man, as talented as he could be, as uh, he could be a great tactician, would he be able to deal with all the other stuff that's been going on? And, and you know, I don't know. Maybe he could, maybe he couldn't. But at the very worst, if he is going to stay, um, I, I hope there will be some big changes around him. I hope that he's not stubborn enough to... to and it's not so much about, you know, does he need the help? Doesn't he need the help? I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is for succession after him for the next 5, 10, 20 years of Arsenal Football Club's kind of history... We need that succession plan if he's going to stay. We need changes because the man after Arsene Wenger will need a different structure because football changed. So we'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, if, if he goes, then I think we have to be thankful um, because he's been amazing. And if he stays, well, let's hope that there's, there's a few more changes and, 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 and things kind of do change next season and beyond. Good stuff. I could have had two brews in that time, I kill. But good stuff. <laughs> stuff. I, think I, I agree with um, all your you guys salient points there for me um, this season as you said wasn't a great built run, it wasn't really a great run up to the, to the FA Cup semi-finals I mean nobody gave us a chance we were we were fourth seeds in the semi-final but we might as well have been tenth seeds that's how much of a chance people gave us we um, showed Matt. We, we 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 you know we showed great determination against Man City to hang in there and then we showed uh, we, we outfought them to win the game at, you know, on the, on, you know, finishing very strongly again on Saturday. No one gave us a chance against the, the, the you know, the, uh, the, the impregnable, impenetrable champions. You know, Conte was the man. You know, um, Chelsea were there to, to win the double in his first season and we spoiled the party. You know, um, Wenger has shown in those two FA Cup games that, you know, he still has it in him to, um, to be tactically um, as good as as his younger rivals in Pep Guardiola and, and Antonio Conte. 
question is, can he do it over 39, 38 games? We've been here before, Groundhog Day before, you know, kicking on to the next level and whatnot. So we've, 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 we've been here before. I'm a bit tired. I'm, I have to say I'm a bit kind of like, uh, about it. But in this isolation, I think he's shown that, you know, he can live with Pep. He can school Antonio Conte. Being the seventh, you know, being the outright winner of the FA Cup shows that he's, you know, he can do it on a, you know, on a, he, Arsenal can be any team on any given day. You know, it's not, you know, it's, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. The, the question now is now what happens this week in the boardroom? Actually, we've already said, you know, um, there are many different outcomes, many different permutations. For me, if he stays these two years or whatever length of time it's going to be, he can't do it for himself. He's got to think of the long-term future of the club. That means getting the support network around him, you know, hardwiring the infrastructure, sort of the long-term good, future-proofing the good of this club, not just him. It's not about whether he believes he, should, he can work or should work with a director of football or whether we should keep his people around because it's, it's not a two-year thing now. We're looking over 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. What are we doing for the future? And that's all I hope that comes out of this boardroom meeting this week. Um, I want to thank um, Dave, was and Akil for coming on and spending, you know, giving up your time to um, review what has been a, a brilliant weekend. So, Dave, thank you for coming on, sir. Thank you, Giles. Always and you was. Thank Super. You, thanks very much for having me and, and thanks for listening to my bollocks about Ramsey all season. But it did pay off, lads. It did pay off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he needs to understand it's a 38 game season as well. <laughs> <laughs> See you next year, Dave. <laughs> and you as well, Akil. Like thanks for coming on tonight. And uh, no, no problem at all. All right, that's been a good ramble podcast FA Cup final review. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Hope you enjoyed it. Give us a little um, like on any platforms. Obviously on on iTunes. Please. Uh, like, comment, rate, you know, it bumps us up the, the list. We don't know how well we're doing. We don't know how many people listen to us. We don't know if we're being well received. But, you know, a little, a little acknowledgement wouldn't go amiss. Also, on YouTube, please like, comment, respond, um, and all the other platforms. Please uh, subscribe, tune in. It's been a Guna Ramble podcast. I've been your host, Giles. It's been a pleasure this season. Up your arsenal. Up the arsenal. This podcast is sponsored by the UK's number one matched betting site. Odds Monkey shows you exactly how to turn free bets into real money. Win even if your bet loses. Give it a try at oddsmonkey.com for just one pound when you sign up to premium using the offer code Bergcamp.